Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me this morning. Hey, thank you for your devotion and for all that you do to stay in touch with God's Word and know what's going on in this world. We go to Luke chapter 7 again today to a spooky passage of Scripture that to me was being used by the Lord Jesus to talk about the conditions of his day, but sounds suspiciously like our own. Join me all the way down in Luke 7 to verse number 31. Remember, he's just had the encounter with the disciples of John the Baptist. He's talked about John the Baptist in this dividing line of history that John represents. But now listen to what he has to say. To what then should I compare the people of this generation and what are they like? Now, before Jesus makes this comparison, I want you to think not so much about the generation he's living in at the time, for which this will be an accurate statement, but think, think how these words echo down through history. Could we be looking at a similar generation today? He's going to talk about the religious leaders of the day, leaders of that culture, and I'd like for you to think in terms of, yes, religious and even political leaders of our own world today and see if we don't see a similar parallel circumstance. Listen to what he says. What shall we liken this generation to? He says in verse 32, they are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to each other. Hey, we played the flute for you, but you didn't dance. We sang a lament, but you didn't weep. For John the Baptist did not come eating bread or drinking wine, and you say, he has a demon. The Son of Man has come, eating and drinking, and you say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by all her children. Now, when Richards deals with this passage, I want you to listen to the way he describes it, because it's Jesus using a typical metaphor, something people saw all the time, and that's children playing in the street. Now, Jesus identified John as a great prophet, and while the sinful, uh, the sinful of society recognized him and responded to his message, the Pharisees and the experts of the law had rejected John and God's purpose for them. Why? Well, Jesus illustrates it from that familiar scene of children playing in the streets. They play wedding, and they play funeral, and they complain when others won't play their game. And that Jesus, <laughs> that Jesus said, is what the religious leaders had done. They'd been playing games. And they whined because neither John, that gaunt and austere wilderness man, nor Jesus, a social, friendly teacher, played their games with them. If you won't play our way, Jesus pictured them saying, and we can clearly see the point uh, and the, the, the pout on their childish faces, then we won't play at all. So there. But Jesus wasn't playing games. And if you and I are to have a meaningful relationship with him, we can't play games either. In Jesus, our God has come, and we must now be fully committed to him. You know, what's striking about this illustration is that as we look around the world today, it seems like the kids are actually in charge the ones that Jesus illustrated as being leaders of the day who are more acting like spoiled children. You may not have seen it, or maybe you're too young to have paid any attention, but in 1966, there was a Star Trek episode entitled Mary. Now, if you'd watched it and didn't catch the title, you might have thought the name of the uh, character referred to in the title was Mary, M-A-R-Y, but no, it's M-I-R-I. Miri, named after one of the key characters, a uh, almost uh, almost teenage child, at least by appearance, discovered on this particular planet. You see, uh, Captain Kirk and his crew, uh, his landing party, beamed down to this planet that had been giving an old-style SOS signal. Something wrong here. Help us out. <laughs> And this old-style SOS signal drew them to the planet. They beamed down to find a world virtually identical to Earth, but inhabited only by children. What had taken place was experiments to prolong life went awry, and instead of making life longer for everyone, what it did was bring about a terrible disease that infected all human beings who had reached puberty. 
So the only ones that were left were the children. And those children who somehow made it to puberty then automatically got the disease, the terminal illness that would kill them. What's amazing then is the landing party discovers these so-called children that are there running the planet are actually very old. <laughs> yes, the experiment has worked for them, but they've been perpetual children, some of them now hundreds of years old. Now, what's the lesson here for us? You know, we are on a planet that looks like is being run by the kids. Yeah, that's right. Like it's a big game. Do you ever break out that game risk, you know, worldwide domination, and you have the whole world fight each other to see who wins? <laughs> That's the kind of game it seems like we're playing right now. And you're playing games with all kinds of different puzzle pieces. Hey, let's turn a virus loose on the whole world, see what happens with that. Hey, let's uh, try to have world domination and see who can control people, and let's make some crazy new laws that make no sense. Oh, let's bring this world to the brink of annihilation in World War III. It seems like the children are in charge. Those who have any sense at all should be putting out an SOS signal, not to some aliens to come rescue us. No, the kind of SOS that you and I put up in the form of prayers to the Lord our God, our Creator. Oh, He knows what's going on, and He can see it. And right now, it's just like in Jesus' day. Yeah, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, they were in control at least they thought they were. They really weren't, but that's the appearance. As you look around today, it looks like, yes, the inmates are in charge of the asylum, and they're taking us to the brink of destruction. But is God asleep with all of this going on? No, he is not. He not only sees, hears, understands, but he's got a plan. And as you and I trust in him, then we can say with the Apostle John at the end of the book of Revelation, even so, Lord Jesus, come. God bless you. Thanks for spending some time with me this morning. We'll do this again tomorrow as we go through the Gospel of Luke when we wake up in God's Word.